So, if you come and tell me that there is a laptop better than the MacBook Pro, there are only two options. Either I laugh in your face or I'm willing to listen, but you better be well prepared to back up the claim. And here I am finding myself in this awkward position right now. So what happened and how did I end up asking myself this crazy question from the title of this video? Well, let me tell you how it all happened and who the protagonist is. A couple of weeks ago, I tested one of the first laptops with the new generation of mobile AMD processors, the Asus ZenBook S16. Beyond the absolutely ridiculous naming scheme of these processors, their efficiency is excellent and particularly welcome in the context of the offensive from new Windows laptops with ARM processors from Qualcomm, which are starting to give AMD and Intel a run for their money and which finally promised to level the playing field with Apple laptops with M processors. And one of my burning curiosities is how the same processor from the ZenBook S16 would perform if it wasn't limited to 28 watt as it is on that model. Sure, that's understandable given that the ZenBook S16 is a thin and light laptop. And guess what? Asus satisfied my curiosity and sent me for review their newest laptop in the creative field, this ProArt P16 equipped with the same Ryzen AI9 HX370 processor, but this time with the power limit set to 70 watt in performance mode. Now I'm really curious. Before we get into the actual testing, let me tell you a few words about the design and construction of the ProArt P16, because if you claim it can compete with the MacBook Pro, then performance alone is not enough. And the new ProArt is exactly how I like it elegant, discreet, and surprisingly small for what's under the hood. The ProArt series is not new, we've encountered it before. This model doesn't just come with a substantial hardware update, but its design is also a facelift compared to previous models. First of all, Asus decided to get rid of the tail present on the previous ProArt models, specifically those extra centimeters extending the chassis behind the laptop. If that wasn't enough, the new iteration of the ProArt is also considerably lighter, weighing in at 1.85 kilograms. This weight reduction is significant, especially if you compare it with recent Ultrabooks, which are increasingly slim and elegant. Another aspect that pleasantly surprised me is that this model no longer comes with that knob, that round button specific to ProArt models, which took up quite a bit of space. The Asus dial function is now included directly in the trackpad. We know it can fulfill a multitude of functions, being compatible with many applications, or you can simply use it to adjust settings like brightness and sound. It's one of those nice-to-have things that you don't realize you need until you start using them repeatedly. And since I mentioned the trackpad, it's quite large. It starts right at the edge of the chassis and ends under the keyboard, with practically no distance between these two elements. Besides being very large, it also feels great to use, and the dial included in it makes me call it the coolest trackpad I've dealt with in a long time. Moving on, the keyboard, although quite compact, left me with nothing to criticize. The key travel is ideal, and their sound is almost imperceptible. And one more thing I almost forgot. It also has a special button for Copilot, which I find completely useless. I don't think there are people who really need a dedicated button to access Copilot, not to mention that a multifunctional macro button would have been much more useful and better suited to what this laptop aims to do. And if you're wondering why the keyboard is a bit small, well, this compromise was made to make room for the massive sound system present on either side of the mentioned keyboard. We're talking about six speakers certified by Harman Kardon and, as in the past, with Dolby Atmos support. It's clear that I wanted to listen to them as soon as I first opened the lid of this laptop and they did not disappoint. I listened to music, watched an episode of a series and in the end I declare myself quite satisfied. I don't think it gets better than this for a laptop of this size. On the multimedia side, the screen is a 4K OLED in a 16x10 format and has a 16-inch diagonal. Not only is the image splendid, but the screen also has touch capabilities, which of course are a matter of taste. Personally, it doesn't inspire me, but I know quite a few who prefer to use the laptop in tablet mode, interacting directly with the screen. Asus chose to go all-in. If you don't want to use the touch function, don't use it, 
but if you do, it's there. My only real problem with this display is the refresh rate, which is a mediocre 60 Hz. Sure, it's assumed that a content creator, designer, etc. doesn't need astronomical frequencies, but seriously, 60 Hz? The previous ProArt model I tested had 120. Asus, couldn't you at least stick to that value? To get back on topic, to assist the capacitive panel, Asus also included a stylus, which comes directly in the package. For those who want to use this ProArt for drawing or handwriting, it's a welcome addition. Personally, I can't really use the device because, in terms of artistic skill, I have two left hands, but I'm sure many will appreciate this pen as a useful addition. Right above the screen, we also find a web camera with 1080p resolution and Windows Hello support. The camera is mediocre and I would have expected something better for such a premium laptop, or at least a physical switch placed either above it or on the chassis of the laptop to allow me to cover and uncover it at will. But putting aside these minor annoyances, overall I'm delighted with the upgrades Asus has brought here, both in terms of design and multimedia. The only thing I can't overlook, pun intended, is the mediocre refresh rate. 60Hz is too little for a premium panel and I believe Asus could have given us something better without too much effort, given the extensive range of OLEDs they have at their disposal. And now let's move on to serious stuff. As I mentioned at the beginning, this ProArt P16 contains the new AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 processor, which is exactly the same as the one on the ZenBook presented a few weeks ago. But this laptop doesn't have the same power consumption limitations as the ZenBook, because the ProArt is not a thin and light ultrabook. We will soon see what the 12 cores and 24 threads are truly capable of. But before we get there, let me tell you one more thing. The ProArt P16 also has a dedicated graphics card, and on top of that, one hell of a powerful one. We're talking about an RTX 4070, the laptop version, granted, but it has enough horsepower for design, engineering, or video editing. Simply put, it crushes many of those fancy SOCs if you catch my drift. I'm also not embarrassed by the RAM, because it's rare to find a laptop these days with 64 gigs of DDR5 at a frequency of 7500 MHz. In this context, it doesn't even matter that you can't replace the memory sticks, because I don't think you'll need more than that, either now or in the years to come. Data storage is handled by a 2TB PCI Express 4 SSD, but unlike the RAM, it is not soldered to the motherboard, so there's the possibility of an upgrade, meaning you can substantially extend your storage if you need more than 2TB. The laptop's battery is 90Wh and comes with a fairly large brick with an output of 200 watts. And even though the battery is big, it clearly won't compare in terms of autonomy with laptops that have ARM processors. You know how it is, you win some, you lose some. And what you win here is performance and lose autonomy. And since I've already mentioned the processor, graphics card, RAM and storage, all that's left is connectivity. The two USB-C ports may look identical at first glance, but they're not. The one on the left is USB 4, while the other is a USB 3.2. Besides the two USB-C ports, there are also two USB-A ports, both at the 3.2 standard and an HDMI 2.1 port that at least partially solves the refresh rate issue. A combo jack for headphones and microphone, an SD card reader, and of course, the special port for charging the laptop. Wireless connectivity includes Wi-Fi 7, the most advanced option available on the market right now, and Bluetooth 5.4. On the software side, or rather bloatware, the laptop comes packed with Asus proprietary applications. Besides the classic My Asus, there's also ProArt Creator Hub, where you can see things like temperatures and frequencies, the software for dial, and a few others, which honestly, I don't care about. But hey, we already know that Asus tends to dress its laptops with the whole closet when it comes to software. And on top of that, they insist on this whole artificial intelligence story, and an example of this is the so-called StoryCube, a specific ProArt application that acts as an image manager. Well, I'll let you guess how it does that, Yes, exactly through AI. As if this couldn't be done efficiently without the help of an MPU. The same goes for Muse 3, which is supposed to be the perfect software for digital creativity, allowing you to use AI to generate new ideas. Yeah, you already know my opinion, I vocalized it more than once here on the channel. We have some extraordinary efficient solution in search of a problem. Alright, and now we've reached the climax of this build-up. 
performance tests. I compared the results obtained by the ProArt P16 with those of the ZenBook S16 and those of the VivoBook S15, which has a Snapdragon X Elite processor. And from time to time, I'll also mention the results of my Apple laptop with the M3 Max. So, a processor that performs well even with severe consumption limitations becomes even better when some of those limitations disappear. How much better? Well, in multi-core, we're talking about a performance level superior to a desktop Ryzen 7700X. But let's take a closer look at the results and start with the older Cinebench R23, where unlike the Snapdragon X Elite laptops, the Ryzen on the ProArt is perfectly compatible. In multi-core, it scored 21,500 points, far above the 16,000 scored by the same processor but implemented at only 28 watt on the ZenBook S16, and more than double than the ARM-based Snapdragon, which is not fully compatible with this test. But the biggest surprise for me was that it narrowly beats by just over a thousand points my own MacBook Pro with the M3 Max. 21,500 versus almost 20,500. In Cinebench 24, which is now fully compatible with ARM processors, with 1,200 points in multi-core, the ProArt predictably beats its more frugal implementation on the ZenBook, which scored only 968 points, and also the Snapdragon X Elite with 971, but falls below the Apple M3 Max processor, which scored 1,400. Even in Geekbench 6, it doesn't beat that one, scoring just over 15,000 points, well below the 19,000 of the M3 Max. But here the situation is a bit reversed, with Geekbench being more ARM-friendly and less so with pure x86 architecture like this AMD. However, it beats in this last test both the ZenBook S16 with the same Ryzen AI9 HX370 and the Snapdragon X Elite by a margin of about 500 points. So, the conclusion goes like this. In all tests, the Ryzen AI9 HX370 surpasses both Qualcomm's ARM processor and its own more economical implementation on the ZenBook S16. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I say this because the ProArt also has a dedicated GPU. But to have the most rigorous comparison, I first tested the laptop with just the integrated graphics card to see the effect of increased power on the processor as a whole. This extra power consumption is noticeable even for the integrated graphics part of the processor, because when the processor can use more power, the integrated GPU can also perform better. I observed an average 20% increase in graphics performance compared to the same Ryzen but implemented on the ZenBook, a progress amplified when the load is mixed with the processor. So, we've seen how the processor and integrated GPU perform, but how big is the difference when using the RTX 4070 graphics card instead of the Radeon 890M. Well, it's big. In other words, it's game over, pun intended. As you can see, the dedicated graphics card crushed, obliterated all the synthetic tests numbers obtained by the other two laptops, showing an average performance 160% higher than the scores with the integrated card, which defeated anyway the competition with Snapdragon or M3 Max. And last but not least, in this section, I'll talk about the temperatures that I paid attention to throughout all the tests. In the case of the processor, this exceeded 90 degrees Celsius only under full load and occasionally when running OCCT and the Cinebench test in a loop. Even under pressure, the graphics card stayed below 80 degrees Celsius all the time. Indeed, the cooling system, consisting of three fans, did its job honorably and the noise was not disturbing. In terms of tonality, the noise is typical of an air current. There are no high-pitched or whistling tones. I could say that for what it contains, the ProArt P16 is a fairly quiet laptop. So, the laptop has a powerful processor, a solid dedicated graphics card, so I couldn't resist testing a few games on this laptop. I didn't choose very demanding titles because this is not a laptop designed for gaming. The first game I chose was of course CS2, set to 1080p resolution and low graphics. I didn't push the resolution or graphics settings because I wanted to see the maximum FPS this system could achieve. When I used the RTX 4070 graphics card, I got a constant 240-280 FPS, respectable numbers that even the most demanding esports players can complain about. 
Performance dropped significantly when I used the integrated graphics, but even so, the gaming experience was good, maintaining 130-180 FPS. Once again, we see the difference between this laptop and the Zenbook, with which I got a considerably lower constant of 90-120 FPS in the same game, with the same settings and resolution. Too bad this abundance of frames was wasted on a 60Hz panel in the case of this Pro Art. Bummer. The next game was Ghost of Tsushima, another title I tested on the Zenbook, where I got an average of under 40 FPS, even at 1080p resolution and very low graphics settings. Now, with this RTX 4070 and the same settings as on the Zenbook, I got 125 FPS on average, even in intense combat moments. Even when I ran the game with the Radeon 890M, the number of frames per second was almost double than that obtained on the Zenbook S16. And the last title on the list was Forza Horizon 5, and again the intention was to maximize FPS values, so I used 1080p resolution and low graphics. The game ran brilliantly with an average of about 190 frames per second when using the dedicated graphics card and 93 FPS when using the integrated graphics. Not bad at all, and I could have raised the graphics settings much higher and increased the resolution in all games, and I still would have enjoyed a good gaming experience thanks to this RTX 4070. So, the ProArt P16 performed well even in games, and I'm sure it can run almost any title you want, as long as you don't dream of ray tracing or gaming at native resolution. If you want to buy a laptop strictly for gaming, of course, there are better options. But if you want a workhorse on which you can occasionally play a match of CS or why not enjoy an RPG that catches your eye, the ProArt P16 is just right. Just make sure to use an external monitor, otherwise you'll be wasting all those beautiful frames per second. And that's the story of the ProArt P16. Yes, it's a good laptop and I really enjoyed using it. I also appreciated the accessories that came in the box, like the backpack I've been using for the past few days, the pen and the LAN adapter. How much does it cost? $2700. But for those who work in creative fields and make their money with it, even though this amount may seem high for the average user, it is not out of the ordinary in these fields. The OLED screen is very accurate, despite its laughable refresh rate, the audio system is excellent and the construction and design are no less impressive than those of an Apple laptop. The only point where my MacBook Pro wins without any doubt is autonomy, but even that is no longer as weak as it used to be on Windows with the advent of this new generation of powerful yet more economical processors than before. I also await the response from Intel, whose Lunar Lake is on the way. And with that being said, please tell me in the comments. What do you think about this ProArt P16? What do you think is more important in a laptop? Performance? Or autonomy? I believe this will be the question that will dominate this segment of products in the medium and long term. And with that being said, please subscribe to our channel. I thank you for that and wish you all the best.